Hello everyone, we are on week 19. It's an A week for CSA shares. For full shares, we have 24 weeks. So after this week, there's four more weeks left to our um, CSA. So remember to pick up each week if you are in every other share. We have two more A weeks after this week and two more B weeks after this week. So um, we still have quite a bit of CSA produce to pick up and work through for the next um, little, I guess a little over a month. Couple of quick announcements. Um, there was a volunteer opportunity this past weekend, um, garlic and onion trimming. So we had a few volunteers and the farmers wanted to thank those volunteers for coming out and helping them with trimming the onions and garlic. And then there's also another volunteer opportunity coming up this Saturday. It was in the email, so details were in the email. Um, it is not at the Percocet location, it's at the Regalsville location. So there's um, very detailed directions in the email, so refer to the email for that. It's this coming Saturday at 9.30 a.m. till about probably noon. Um, Anyone that comes will be helping the farmers um, harvest potatoes, so bring gloves um, just because you'll be digging in the dirt to get those potatoes out. Um, also, last announcement, we are doing on the Facebook group, we're doing a Preserve the Harvest 2021 challenge. That challenge continues through the week until Thursday night. So if anyone else has posts where they've been either freezing, dehydrating, canning, any way that you've pickling, um, you've been preserving any of the harvest, whether it be the produce we receive from the CSA or um, we've seen a lot of posts that involve the fruit from our fruit share. If you're using any of that in a way where it's um, preserving it so that you can use it more during the winter or after the CSA is over, shoot some pictures there's details on the facebook group there's also been details in the emails post your pictures explain what you did and then use hashtag preserve the harvest 2021 so that is open until thursday night so volunteer opportunity this saturday preserve the harvest challenge continues through thursday night all right, let's jump right into what we have this week. Um, some repeat items that we've been seeing a lot, so we'll get through those quickly, and then I'll save the new items for the end. So first off, our first thing that we want to use within the next few days, ideally, so that it's um, the freshest, is our salad mix. We have a half pounder of our salad mix. Get stored in the fridge in plastic. Um, you can either leave it in this bag or put it in a Debbie Meyer green bag. Leave it unwashed until you're ready to use it. Once you're ready to use it, wash it, um, and then it's best used in a fresh salad as a side. Um, it can be packed for lunches, it can be a side dish for dinner or even a breakfast. So lots of um, other vegetables you could put with it to make a hearty salad or you could just keep it simple and keep the greens and dress the greens with like olive oil, lemon juice, or olive oil and vinegar. Um, and then keep it nice and simple so you don't have to put a lot of vegetables on. So that's our salad mix that we wanna use first. So we also have head lettuce. Our head lettuce is a little bit hardier, so it'll last a little bit longer. Um, store this in the fridge in a plastic bag. These leaves um, work well as wraps. They also work well on burgers. Um, you can chop them up do like a chopped salad or chop them up and use them on tacos as a topping. Um, but lettuce gets stored in the fridge in a plastic bag. Okay, we have a bunch of Swiss chard. Swiss chard gets stored in plastic, um, in a plastic bag, ideally a Debbie Meyer green bag if you have those in um, the fridge. Any of our greens we wanna use first. So those are the, the items that are um, not going to last basically beyond this week. Um, some of the stuff stored in Debbie Meyer green bags lasts a little bit longer. Our Swiss chard is good raw or cooked. I tend to like it cooked 
um, you can include the stems. So ideally you wanna chop up the stems and the leaves separate just because the stems are thicker and they will take a little bit longer to cook. So if you're gonna saute it with like onion and garlic, throw your onions, throw your garlic in, throw your stems in, saute that, and then add your leaves and wilt the leaves and cook those um, for a little bit less time than everything else. Um, I like Swiss chard with eggs. Um, so it's a great breakfast side. Um, but you can throw it in soups, you can juice it if um, you have a juicer, you can throw it into smoothies. Just like we've seen a couple of posts on um, preserving kale, you can actually do that with Swiss chard as well. So wash it up, um, chop it up, and you can freeze it and throw it in smoothies throughout the winter um, or in soups. So you can make green cubes out of these. So that gets stored in the fridge. We have more basil. Basil gets stored in, I have a little glass here, sorry, in a glass of water on the countertop. So basil does not like to be cold. Um, basil is good in salad dressings, in sauces, in pestos, really awesome in pasta dishes. Um, there's several cocktails that, that can use basil. Um, if you want to preserve it, because we've gotten a lot over the past few weeks, I like to make pestos and then freeze those pesto, that pesto in um, the large ice cube trays. And then once it's frozen, pop those out and throw them in a, a Ziploc bag. And then I just pull out a pesto cube or two when I'm ready to use it. So that's an easy way to preserve it. Okay, peppers. So we have Cubanelle peppers. We have sweet peppers, and both of these are really good raw. Um, they get stored in the crisper drawer of your fridge. Um, they can be cooked, they can be sauteed, they can go in stir fries, they can be stuffed and cooked, they can be grilled. Um, they can also all be frozen, so if you still have any of these peppers left from last week, use those up and maybe preserve these by freezing them. Um, they're really good for like sausage and peppers. They're good for stir fries. They're good if you do skewers on the grill, um, sheet pan meals, and they're also just great chopped up and as a snack. Um, my kids love to take these to school. Our other peppers are hot peppers. So we got to pick four hot peppers. This one's a poblano and a jalapeno. There's also cherry bombs, long hots, a bunch of others. So the heat, most of the heat in our hot peppers is held inside in the seeds and the membranes. So if you wanna reduce the heat of these, you're gonna cut, cut, wash them, cut them open, remove the stem, remove the membranes and the seeds, and you're gonna get less heat. But basically we're using these to add heat to dishes. Um, so if you want to add heat to salsas, um, add hot peppers. If you, you can actually stuff poblanos, um, jalapenos, you can make jalapeno poppers. Both can be frozen as well. Um, so just like we freeze the other peppers, you can freeze hot peppers. Um, these can be frozen whole, like the jalapenos, can be frozen whole, or um, I slice them into rings and freeze them that way. Okay, so that is our peppers. Then we have sweet onions. Sweet onions get stored in a cool, dry place. These are really good raw or cooked, so they can be sauteed, um, they can be caramelized, they can be grilled. You can slice them up raw. I like to slice them really thin and put them on salad. Um, there was a recent blog recipe post about um, making onion powder, so you could certainly use these to make onion powder, um, and that's a way to preserve um, onions. These can also be frozen. So if you have a lot of onions, you can peel, wash them, peel them, and then slice them up or dice them, and then put them in Ziploc bags and freeze them. And then you just pull them out. Obviously you're not gonna use them raw because anything you freeze is gonna gain a little bit of moisture. So it's not gonna keep the, the nice texture, um, but can easily be thrown into a saute pan, into soups and things like that. So cool, dry place away from potatoes. The potatoes give off moisture, so we wanna keep our onions separate. Garlic, also stored in a cool, dry place. Um, 
I basically say this every week, but garlic is great added to just about everything. Um, I love garlic, it's probably one of my favorite things. So you can add it to um, saute dishes, you can add it to soups, you can add raw garlic to vinaigrettes and dressings, which would go really well with our salad mix this week. Um, you can chop off the top and throw it in the oven and do roasted garlic, um, which is a great spread for um, breads. Um, this was also in that same blog post, blog recipe post for the onion powder. There was also um, information about making garlic powder and the onion and garlic powder is phenomenal. If you've never tried making your own, it the flavor is out of this world compared to store-bought. So it's, it's worth at least a, trying a little bit. Um, so cool, dry place. I keep my onion and garlic together. Okay, potatoes. We got a quart of potatoes. These get stored in a cool, dry place, but away from our onions and our garlic because they do give off moisture. These are great roasted, they're great boiled, they're great grilled, um, they're great as a starchy side. There's lots of blog um, recipe posts, so um, there's, I know there's been posts about potato salads, um, and I think I still have dill left over from last week, so you could do like a dilly potato salad. Um, you could do a mayonnaise-based potato salad. You can just do boiled potatoes that um, you mash as a side. Or you can do a big sheet pan meal with potatoes and peppers and onions, um, maybe even some tomatoes as a side. So those are our potatoes. We got, I think it was about three to four pounds of red beef steak tomatoes. These get stored on the counter. Um, they're beautiful, they're great just sliced on a sandwich, on maybe a grilled cheese, um, on burgers. You can slice them up and just season them with a little sea salt and have them as a snack or a side. Um, great for salsas, great roasted as a sauce. Um, so we, we've seen a lot of tomatoes throughout the season. So we've had cherry tomatoes and heirloom tomatoes and um, the red beef steaks um, and plum tomatoes. These are the last of what we'll see for the tomatoes um, in terms of the red beef steaks because all the other ones are done. So these, um, we've got a lot of ingredients for salsas, a lot of ingredients that you could throw in a sauce. Or I just made a big batch of the roasted tomato soup that's on the blog. I did a double batch. We had it half for dinner and then the um, second half I froze so that we have a quick easy meal that I can pull out. So these get stored on the countertop and just keep an eye on them. Um, if you start to see a spot, then you're gonna wanna use them or cut that spot out. Once you slice them, you wanna keep them in the fridge and you wanna use them within a day or two. Okay, we have three new items this week. So we got to pick lima beans, a quart of lima beans. Um, these are brand new. I've actually never worked with fresh lima beans before, so I'll be playing around with these this week as well. Lima beans, so this is the pot of the lima bean. We wanna get the beans that are actually on the inside. So quick and easy way, let's see, most of them were I already shucked some of them, but quick, easy way, if you still have the stem or any portion of the stem, if you pull that down and peel it, that one didn't peel really well, but um, peel that string down and then spin it one way, spin it the other, it opens right up. And then we've got the beans in there. So you wanna remove those beans and then the pod gets tossed. And these are all the beans that I've shucked or, or um, removed so far from the pods. Once you remove them from the pods, you should get about a cup and a half of beans. You do wanna cook these. Um, so different recipes are saying different things. Um, a lot of recipes are saying to use because it's not really often that we can get fresh lima beans. So a lot of um, 
recipes are saying um, to use frozen or canned, these are fresh. So you'll have to adjust those according. Um, you can blanch them and freeze them. You can throw them in soups. You can just boil them. Um, you definitely don't, like I, I would blanch these before actually throwing them in, in the freezer if you're not using them right away. Um, you will notice that there's different colors. So they're slightly different colors. There's some more green, a little bit whiter, but they're all fine. Um, they get stored in the fridge. So you can either store them like this in plastic or you can shuck them or remove the beans and store them like this in plastic. So your choice. These are baby lima beans. So um, you'll notice they're a little bit smaller than the larger lima beans. They're an heirloom variety that our farmers grow. So I'll be posting ideas for um, recipes for these as I play with them, but I know they're great in soups and they're great in succotash. So if that's usually with corn, um, maybe even some tomatoes, that's a great side. If you see recipes for butter beans, butter beans are another name for lima beans. So same thing, they're, they're also known as butter beans. So search recipes, if anyone has some really good ones from growing up, we never used to eat these, so I don't, I don't know much about them. I'll be playing around with them throughout the week. Um, but as you have your favorite recipes, be sure to post them so we can try them as well. And we'll be seeing these appear for the next few weeks, hopefully. So those are brand new, lima beans. Stored in the fridge, either shucked or unshucked, your choice. Um, the shucking of them doesn't really take much, it takes time, but not a lot of um, thought. So you can do it while you're doing something else. If you're watching TV tonight or um, prep it before, because you have to shuck each individual pod. The pods will generally have about three, anywhere from two to four beans in them. This one has four, you can kind of see, but some of the smaller ones have any two. Um, and then a lot of them have three beans. So those are our lima beans. We also got a new squash. So this is called a coconut squash. Um, you can slice it. I like to slice off the top and the bottom, slice it in half, remove the seeds. And just like with some of the other recipes, you can roast those seeds. I tend not to throw any squash seeds or any pumpkin seeds out. I always roast them because my kids like them as a snack or as a topping, a crispy topping on top of stuff. Um, you can slice it in half and roast it that way, just like you would a butternut. Or these ridges, you can use those as guides to cutting and you can slice them down into wedges. Um, your choice whether or not you peel it, it's kind of an in-between skin, so the skin is edible. Um, it can be a little bit harder as it cools. The recipe this week will showcase this guy, um, and it's a fun recipe. Um, so hold on to this until Thursday if you aren't sure what to do with it, or um, we will likely be getting the same one next week as well. Um, so the recipe on Thursday will showcase the coconut squash. And cool dry place, um, this should last a few weeks. Um, it's a cross between a butternut squash and I think a kabocha squash. There's more information on this on the um, email that we got this week. Okay, last but not least is our fresh ginger. This is probably my favorite item this week because I always feel like fresh ginger is a luxury item. Um, ginger is wonderful in tea. It's wonderful added to stir fries. Um, fresh young ginger like this doesn't have the cured skin, so you do not need to peel it. And in fact, even these stems can be used to flavor um, soups or broths. So you don't need to throw those out. Um, cocktails, you can make fresh ginger ale. You can, um, it's really good for like a hot tea and then just add it as flavoring to um, different dishes. Fresh ginger gets stored in the fridge. So you either wanna store it in a plastic bag, hold like this, 
or in a glass container. If you don't use it within the next week, week and a half, then you're going to want to preserve it. So to preserve it, you can freeze it. You can chop, you can freeze it just like this and then chop off pieces and you're going to want to grate it um, or chop it up while it's frozen because otherwise it's going to become mush. Or you can um, chop it up, grate it and freeze it that way, like freeze it in ice cube trays. Um, so lots of ideas there, but this is probably my favorite item this week. Um, so three new items, the lima beans, the coconut squash, and the ginger, the fresh ginger. All the other items are repeats. If you have any questions, please let me know if there's things you sh you're struggling with, um, any items that you still have that you haven't either preserved or used or have on the menu for this week. Reach out to us, we will help and guide you. Um, and then post about how you use your ginger this week. The recipe for this week will showcase this guy, the squash, and then also post how you use the lima beans since these two are new um, and the coconut squash, but this can be interchanged for lots of other squashes as well. So that's a little bit easier. These two are, are brand new to the CSA. Um, so enjoy your shares this week, and I will see you again next Tuesday night. Remember, after tonight, we have four more weeks of lives, um, four, more CS, four more weeks of CSA pickups if you have a full share. All right, thanks. Bye.